Oh, it's snowing. Oh, I just love the snow in Minecraft. I think it is so pretty. That puts me in the mood to make a snow golem. Two snow blocks and a carved pumpkin. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Oh, dude, Halloween's over. Let me help you out. Wait, where are you going? Oh, don't go down there. There's powdered snow down there. No, Mr. Snow Golem. Well, well, now what do I do? I've got an idea. Okay, so the golem and the snow gave me a crafting idea and I need some new throw pillow covers for the winter. Hmm, let's see what I got. The first thing I'm gonna do is check my stash because I would rather use what I've got instead of buying a bunch of new stuff. All right, I think I've got some ideas. Let's go. Let's begin by cutting fabric. My fabric is all cut and ready for this project. So here's how it goes. We've got a giant piece that's 18 by 18. That is exactly the size of the pillow form I used and I cut the fabric exactly to the size of the pillow form. I made a square frame here that's 13 by 13. And then I have these shiny stripes because I'm going to make a sparkly snowy picture frame to go with my snow golem. For the back of the pillow, I'm using a simple no zipper method so I've gone ahead and folded and pressed the raw edges of my opening. It's a half, double half inch. So you can see there, and it's just folded in twice and then I'll stitch it closed, make it nice. The way these work is that with these nice hemmed pieces, I will overlap them just like that, sew them all down, and then I'll be able to stick the pillowcase in through the flaps here, so simple. So now that we're done with the fabric, we can move on to the screen print, which I think is so much fun and it doesn't require too many new supplies. You'll need a screen, a squeegee, and of course you're gonna need some ink, but that's kind of it. The only other thing is gonna be large freezer paper in order to cover your screen. But this is such a fun technique because all you're doing is cutting your motif out of the freezer paper and putting it and using it in the screen. So no chemicals are involved. To begin with, we've gotta get the freezer paper cut and then start cutting out the snowflakes. So for the freezer paper, you want it to cover this entire screen. And this is gonna be basically, I want the print kind of centered in the middle of it. I'm going to want the more waxy side to be against the screen. So that's where the ink is gonna hit. And then the paper side can be against the fabric. I have no shortage of confetti. So I'm gonna keep a couple of these little confetti squares because in the end, I'm gonna to need to fill in this hole with a square and I'll need to fill in this hole with a square. So we'll do that in a second. Wait, yes. So the ink is on the inside and the paper paper is on the outside. Good to go. So this is our reference piece. And, and so I need to put a square here, 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 and here. And the way I'm gonna do this is with just the tiniest dab of paint to act as glue. And now what's really key is that the outside of the paper stays clean. Now, I'm gonna fiddle faddle around a little bit. This is trash paper so that we can get the screen nice and locked down. Now, what I don't wanna do is waste my color, but I do have to use my color to lock it down. Some there, and then I'm gonna put some more there and hope that that's gonna be enough. Probably not. I don't think I made enough. Drat. Fingers crossed. So we're pulling at a 45 degree angle across the whole thing, and the goal is just to lock it down, not to actually make a print on this trash paper. And we got all the way across. And then you guys can see what it looks like with the first pull. 
just on paper. Ta-da! So cool. So we have to do two pulls. One is gonna be one half and then the other is gonna be the other half. And so this is all here for aligning. And so we can get this aligned. And then I'm gonna put the paint down again. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing I did last time of putting it there and then here. Grab my squeegee, 45 degree angle, and I'll probably do it twice. So once, twice. And hold this down. <gasps> That's so cool! That's so cool. Dry. Lift up. Oh, good. And then lift up and just hope for the best. Okay, it did take, oh, sweet. Check it out. The best part about a wax paper screen is how easy it is to clean up. You just pull off the wax paper, throw it away, and wash the screen. While our print dries, we get to move on to the felt work. The plan is I'm gonna cut out these big squares, and then I'm gonna cut six little black squares, eight even smaller black squares, and then the brown is gonna be cut as just a stick. And then I'm gonna use the embroidery to help with some of the pixelation that comes naturally with Minecraft, as well as helping to kind of lock down the pieces onto the white. Oh my gosh. I mean, he's only got one arm, but he's already looking so cute. Okay, here we go. Gosh, more little squares, huh? Okay, so now I'm gonna get out just plain and simple glue because I'm gonna end up embroidering the pieces on in the end. So I just need them tacked on so they stay put and don't move around while I'm working. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fold this in half. I think that would be really smart. So with the little snowman, you can of course just stop when you glue them down. I'd glue them down a little bit better, but you could stop. Or you could do the stitch that I'll show you in a second all around the edge to kind of lock it in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add another level and to the brown as well with some embroidery thread to kind of bring out that pixelation look that the snowmans have in Minecraft. So let's start with the arm. And I have two strands of embroidery floss here, which is sufficient. And all I'm gonna do is hold my template next to the arm and just kind of go in and out and create lines. And that will help bring out, bring, bring back out the squares. And yeah, I think it's kind of cool. It gives a little depth, but you don't have to do it. You can just glue it down. So for the black squares on the body, I'm gonna do something a little different than this, but I'm still gonna pull out that pixelation. So I'm gonna start about as centered as I can, and then go straight into the center. And of course, if you wanna be more precise about this, you could draw lines. So now you could definitely stop here and then also add just the, the single line here on the mouth. But with the gray, I think I'm gonna go one step further and I'll show you what I've done. So I've gone and head and added in the lighter gray pixels. So I'll add in the lighter gray pixels here on the lower part of the body as well. And then I'm gonna turn that one into lighter gray and that one into lighter gray, but leave the rest black. So. Here we go. All 
Oh my gosh, look how cute these are. Look at this. It's getting so cute. So the screen print is all done and nicely sealed. So I ironed it to seal down the screen print and you can see the ironing has removed all of my pen marks and even the little crosshatch marks that I did for alignment. So that's great. And next I'm gonna put my little snowman on here. So what I ended up doing is just doing a stitch across to each of the four corners to lock down each of the squares and to just give like the tiniest bit of dimension to each of the squares here. So there, and now I'm gonna organize this guy. And so what I've decided to do is very similar to how I stitched down these blocks. So I made a little template here of my pixels and what I'm gonna do is actually mark with my pen onto the cloth, but first, I'm gonna glue it down. And probably, oh, it actually lines up really nice. How about that? Ha, huh. I actually didn't expect it to line up nice. So when I'm all done, I'll just take a quick iron to the fabric and it will remove all of those little tick marks. So now I'm just gonna take white embroidery floss and I'm going to stitch all the way around each of the squares to hold the snowman in place. Oh, look at how cute the little snowman is. So you can see a little stitching around the edge, hopefully. Can you see it? You see it? Now we can move on to some sewing. So I've got the frame pinned in place and we can get going. So in my fabric, I've indicated the stopping points for my sewing. So this indicates the exact point of the corner. So I'm gonna sew along and stop, and then I'll sew along and stop, and then I'll be able to put the miter in. All the tutorials on YouTube that have mitered corners assumed that you didn't have this giant extra seam allowance from the edge. And I do, so I have to freehand it. So all I'm gonna do is tuck this in to a 45 degree angle till it comes nicely to the corner here. And then I am going to crease it like crazy till I have a nice crease, which will be my sewing line and it will work out just fine, I promise. Perfect and beautiful. Okay guys, final stretch. Last bit is to sew on the back and we're done. Okay, who's excited? Me, I'm excited. Let's stuff this bad boy in there. Hello, I am the corner. All done. This little guy is super cute and it was a really, really fun and quick concept with the felt and the lost wax paper screen print, this project comes together super, super fast. In fact, it was so fast, I want to make another one. I'm gonna go play more video games. Oh my gosh, the little Arctic foxes. They are so cute when they're sleeping. I wonder if I can sneak up on them. Oh no, powdered snow, and I'm not wearing my leather boots. Quick change. Whew. That was lucky, ugh. But now they're all gone, I scared them off. That's okay, I've got inspiration for my next pillow. Those foxes are so adorable and they definitely gave me an idea for my next pillow. Luckily, I cut out extra material when I cut out the first pillowcase. So I've got all the muslin, it's already marked and I've got the backer. With this pillow, I've decided I wanna make everything a little harder. For example, for the back, instead of doing the hidden flap technique, I'm gonna actually add a zipper to this one. Instead of snowflakes, I'm gonna use the freezy pattern that happens when you fall in powdered snow. 
This is a much more detailed print. So I'm gonna go ahead and burn a screen print using Emotion instead of cutting it out of freezer paper. This is gonna allow the nice fine detail for the border. Next for the fox, I want to do a giant cross stitch. I have all this floss from all of our old kits and I bet I can find enough of the best colors in my stash to just make a little foxy pattern. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go to the computer and I'm going to design the border out of freezy pattern and I'll design a sleepy fox cross stitch and then we can get crafting. And one of the ways I'm making it more difficult is instead of a wax paper screen, I'm actually going to use chemicals and I'm going to do a photo emulsion screen because this pattern is so much more detailed. So I've printed it onto a clear vellum and doubled it up and taped it all together. And the next step is to mix the chemicals, pull the screen, dry the screen, and then get this burned in place. Wish me luck. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some black felt. This stops any reflective light from bouncing up underneath the screen. So then I can put down my screen and the vellum on top. While I'm talking here, I'm leaving this white board on top. The emulsion is not so light sensitive, but I don't know how long this will take. So I've got it on there for this part of the demonstration. And then finally, I put my plastic on top of everything, making a giant sandwich. I turn my light on and I burn the screen. So the screen is all burned and this thing has given me more trouble than I even want to talk about. So we're going to do our best. One of the issues was that I think my emotion was bad and I'm going to call Speedball about that tomorrow. But I think I can pull the screen today and so we're going to give it a go. But you can see that I've masked off all of this other area and that is because the emulsion was just so thin and messy. We're just gonna see how it goes. It may turn out terribly. And then I also have a heat gun to help dry the print in the in-betweens. So hopefully this will all work out swimmingly. So our screen print is so nice and dry and now we're going to work on setting the cross stitch in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark the center point of this and these pens they come in clutch. Am I allowed to say that? Because you can mark all over and it just irons away so you can see all my old lines are they're all gone. I'm going to put the fox in the crosshairs and then I'm going to draw a couple little external detail lines. This is going to help me to put the soluble fabric in exactly the right place and align the little tiny dots. So you can see how there's these little tiny dots all through here and that's actually my Aida cross stitch fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these dots with my pencil lines and what that's going to do is make sure that my soluble fabric is square to my backing fabric. I have this soluble fabric all basted down and what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to start right here. This is a giant panel of the of not quite the darkest blue but the second darkest blue and I'm going to do this whole piece just to hopefully get everything in place, see how this works and and then I can start circling outwards from the center. And all done. 
here it is our sweet little fox with his sweet berries in his mouth and in between two ferns and surrounded by our little freezy motif listen i've played a lot of minecraft and it's been a while since i've done cross stitch this cross stitch took forever so at this point i probably could have started a game gotten myself up to full netherite armor, killed the dragon, and built like a palace out of prismarine and quartz forever. It's been shocking, but I'm super proud of it. I'm also super proud that I used found yarn. So all of this yarn is from my stash. If I were to develop this pattern, I would probably print with different yarns from the palettes of the different thread companies. My next step is that I'm actually going to cut the scrim as close to the needlework as possible so that I can reserve this for other projects. I'm about to put this in hot water to dissolve the plastic scrim and I am honestly terrified. I hope it works out well and that this is not the last time it is lovely. If it starts running or anything, as far as the colors are concerned, I am going to absolutely yank it out. And then we'll set my friend out to dry. So Mr. Fox is all dry and ironed. It did take a bit to get that soluble stuff gone. I ended up soaking it for about 10 minutes and then just running it directly under hot water in the sink. It, this is such a big panel for that plasticky stuff that it still had like a tacky feel to it after I did the, the dunk. And so I just rinsed it until that tacky feel was gone. So it did take a little bit longer than I expected but we're all good to go and we are ready to start sewing. Okay, I've got a half inch stitch in here. It's a basting stitch, so I'm gonna be able to rip it right back out. And I have my giant zipper that is too long. And what I'm gonna be doing is stitching it in to the seam like that, see? And then when I rip this out, the zipper will be exposed and we'll be all good to go. Zipper, no zipper. With the zipper on place, all that's left to do is to sew around the perimeter and then this pillow is done. So we're all done with the little fox. This pillow was considerably harder and took more time. A few more techniques that were used in this one instead of the snowman, but it's still such a cute design, so much fun, so winter themed, and the two of them together are just so fun, and I really enjoyed making them. Thanks for watching.